Hey, 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 happy fruition Friday. Let me remove myself real quick before I even get into it. Well, you know what? Before I say anything else, I am Jacosta. Happy fruition Friday. I'm your girl, Jacosta. Make sure while I'm saying all of this, you're hitting that like button, that notification button. You're ready to make your comments. You're subscribing to my channel. But let Add myself back. So I think that that what I just put up says a lot. So most of you will be watching the show in real time right now. And it's all good. It's okay. Because, um, yeah, like I like doing this. It's kind of like a for fun and to get rid of a stressful week. But the reason I'm really behind weeks and days now with this one is because like y'all I have a lot to do I be so tired but I love ready to love okay so what did I tell you to do hit that like button subscribe um, make sure you hit the notification bell make sure you're making comments but this ready to love was given everything I am here to give you the for what for why I'm here to give you the bless a soul make a whole bless a heart make you smart I am here to give you the funny um a lot of laughter great conversation and yes I'm what I consider classy but shady classy shady <laughs> So let's get to it. Let's rock and roll. Guess what? When they open up Nair in the Hair Season 7, Episode 8 for Ready to Love, I thought somebody was just hairy. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I literally thought, wait, is somebody real hairy on the show? What are they talking about? Like, I had no clue where this was going, and it was going all the way left, okay? So again... Ask me if I had a clue. None at all. I honestly, I honestly, with all my heart, thought, yeah, like they found out somebody was really hairy. Ready to love? You did the dang thing. I had to put it up there. <laughs> I thought somebody was hairy. I thought that we were about to see these hairy beings on this show. But that's not what happened. They opened it up with the ladies lounge. They spent time telling. Well, Tommy, you told them, like, you're going to be bringing your ex um, on a date. And your ex is going to come in. And your ex is going to meet your next. Now, uh, I feel a way about that. Because... They're freshly dating each other. So I'm always like, well, what does an ex need to meet your next for? And you just met. I'm a person who's really keen on people getting to know each other. If anybody has ever went out with me, they will tell you that. Like I am on get to know a person. Um, before you do all of that extra, I think if you have children, yes and that's your ex the father of your children when that becomes like your man your everything or your woman like then you can do that but i don't like that ready to love does this whole let your ex meet your next i'm not feeling it but it is what it is but my whole thing is for what for why um in the ladies lounge jeffrey i mean jeffrey asked if tommy would um, tell me if you don't mind, can I wait a little while and stay back so we can talk? Jeffrey, can you please, uh, can you please stop talking like that? I don't understand it. I don't get it. Can somebody send me, if there is somewhere 
where Jeffrey sounds a whole lot different than what she sounds like, that if somebody can send that to me, um, cause you'll get her, she'll, and sometimes in the confessionals, she'll say and sound the way she should. Right. But, oh Lord, she just throws me off all the way off, but that's neither here nor there. Let's go to the next. So she tells Tommy, like, you know what? My first ex is my first few kids. Father, we were together since high school for 12 years. We ain't seen him in six years. My next ex is my other child's father, the last one. And he and I were together for like three years. And we ain't seen him because I gifted him as a child. And he basically didn't want to gift no more. That's basically what she was saying. So this is my thing. Don't say you gifted him a child, okay? Because we're all God's gifts, that's first of all. But that man, I don't know why he doesn't want to be with your child. Most of the time, we, we get the red flags that people are sending and we push them to the side and ignore them. And then we end up in these situations. And I hate that for her. But Put that to the side, girlfriend, where is the guy that you've dated or any guy that you dated last? She's talking about she didn't think they were worthy to come. Wait, but wait, but baby girl, that means you're probably still choosing wrong. So if you're still choosing wrong, I don't think ready to love is for you, which I've not been thinking that at all, because you don't even, you have to get it together. Girl, come on, let's do some therapy get a little counseling and move on with our life so that we can choose better men. I've made bad choices. This last choice, a horrible choice. <laughs> okay, don't get me wrong. But we make some bad choices. And it's okay because I always tell people in the bad choices you make, God has your back and the good choices you make, he has your back because the good choices are what he led you to anyway. The bad choices are what we put ourselves in. Let's really be clear. So three years is what she said. Tommy said, if you cannot find the ex, then you know what? Let your connections know. And this is when I was like, well, Jeffrey, I think you are just not ready to love. But OK, everybody thinks you moving on, child. Morgan and her ex, Junior. Oh, my gosh. Junior was a handsome guy. Hair looked amazing. Um, Lyndon, Junior asked Lyndon, what do you like about her? And then there was like an awkward pause. Let me show you how it was. It's like, ding, right? So awkward pause, awkward moment. Junior waiting for him to say, so we know we, I call Lyndon roommate. So roommate, roommate. Literally was like, it. well, is it fair to say everything? I like everything. She's like, oh, that's so sweet, Morgan. That means that man doesn't know you. Really, he said he could have been like, you know, well, let me tell you the things that, I, that interest me. Um, because we are still getting to know each other. And then said that, but everything. Well, okay, roommate, I'm confused. Move on. So then... He, he asked Tony. Tony said, well, of course, the physical attraction is there and we have a deeper level connection spiritually. I was like, boo, boo, what? Boy, bye. We have a deeper connection. Tony takes me as that guy who tries to woo you over because he knows that he's just a non-committal. Mm. Morgan turns and asks her ex, well, what did what do you like about me? What was it? What did you like about me? What? Oh no, for what, for why, Morgan? For what, for why are we hitting him up to ask him that? For what, for why, Morgan? Hmm? Hmm? We'll need to know that. 
But you know what I believe, Morgan? I believe Morgan still likes Junior and really wants to be with Junior. Even though Morgan wants to play all of us and play like her and Junior had no type of intention on really getting together. They was just having a good time and having fun. But no, baby, you're not fooling me. All of that passion you had behind it, you liked that man and you might have loved that man. And that passion gave the name to this episode. Morgan and Junior seem to need have a little bit of I don't really like the word closure, but they got they have something they need to do. Now I always thought Morgan was a little touched. Baby girl, don't hate on me. I just thought you was a little touched. I believe you are. However, Morgan, 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 when you talked about what you did to Junior. I was taken back. I was taken aback because I was like, you did what? Say, huh, come here. She said she was putting there into that man's hair. See, he loved his hair. And he had beautiful hair is what she said. So she said she was slowly putting there in his hair while he was asleep. Girl. Girl. Why were you slowly putting there in that man's hair? For what, for why were you putting Nair in this man right here's hair? Now, Julia, your hair looked like it came in really good, but you could have, uh, maybe you added extensions. I don't really know, but I'm just going to say it does for a side note. But Morgan, why did you put Nair in that man right there's hair? Why? And look, this is when she was laughing about it. That's scary within itself. Morgan, let me tell you, baby girl, you put Nair in that man's hair, guess what you were given? I'm about to show you. Shout out to Giffer and Giffa Cat for this great clip <laughs> from Fatal Attraction. You were giving Glenn close. You were giving... You were giving like doom, 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 like Morgan. What the world? Like, girl, sis. I y'all, I was scared for Junior. I was like, Junior, why you come? What, what, what? Junior, why did why did you come on here? Be careful, Junior. That's how I felt I needed to like tell Junior, be careful, brother, because oh, uh she probably gonna do some more stuff to you. <laughs> Morgan. I was like, Morgan, mm, y'all better hurry up and tell Morgan she's not ready to love for somebody to lose their hair like Lyndon. Um, yeah, y'all better hurry up and tell her because she's laughing. She did all of this nair in his hair because she thought he was cheating. One time when she had the strep throat, he wasn't there for her. She said it seems that he still um, was just going to be out there in these streets. But here's the thing, if you were sick and the man wasn't there for you and y'all were together, you guys were a couple, that was a red flag to tell you to leave him alone. Like when he's not there for you, not doing things um, with you and not engaged in the time that you guys have for each other, then for what, for why were you trying to be with him? You should have broke up with him. There's no need to put Nair in his hair. That means you were in love, baby. Even though you swear that you hadn't, let me tell you something about Morgan. Morgan loved Junior. I, this is what I believe. Your defense mechanism was that you, for you to say, oh, I wasn't that interested or I'm not in love. That's a defense mechanism. That's what we use as people. I'm not going to just say women because men do it too. Like, you know, you'll put up that so you, that facade, so you make people think, oh, I don't want you. But this right here, Morgan, that was you. That a fatal attraction mess right there. I was waiting for the rabbit to come out and find the rabbit in the pot. I didn't know what was going to happen, Robin. I mean, Robin Morgan, but I was a little terrified. All I have to say is, was a little Glenn Close. It was giving me Glenn Close or a thin line between love and hate, honey. I was terrified. All right, but moving on, let's go to Cynthia, James, Dre, and Anthony. James was Cynthia's ex. That was her kid's father, right? So Terdre comes in first. Y'all know I, I just can't get rid of him having this on his forehead like that. He always has that turd right there. So I Terdre, 
You know, you went back to being Andre when you and Cynthia went on that day and you were very, very, very compassionate and, and you showed her just all out love. You know what I mean? Not like love, like, oh, I want to do it with you, but love, like, not like I want to be your man, but just genuine love for one person to another. But you back to being Turd Dre because that, that little turd that be on here. Okay, anyway. So Turd Dre. Turd Ray with the tendril. You got down, sat down, and James came for your juggler. <laughs> yes. James was tearing you apart. And I don't think you were ready for it. But one thing I realized about you, Turd Ray, is that, yeah, I don't think you're a fit for Cynthia. I don't really think you're a fit for a woman who has children in their their dad is in the life now jeffrey may be okay for you but both of you guys seem very superficial to me so yeah yeah it is what it is but turdre better known as andre but on my channel he turdre so turdre with the tendril james hit you with basically want to know who you were you sit down and you like talking and James, the ex, says, speak up, I can't hear you. And you was like, I'm 39, I had no kids. And then James want to know why you don't have kids. What's up with that? Huh? But you were saying because you were in, you know, you delved into your career, it is what it is. I got it, Turdre. Again, that's Turdre with the turd right there. And it's okay. If that's how you rock and roll with that turd and these women like that turd on your forehead like that. It is what it is. But Turdre, I just ain't feeling it. Because I'm like, for what? For why? You got the little turd right there. But huh, moving on. So James said, what can you bring to the table? Dre, you kept focusing on your business and not on basically what you could bring to the table when it came to Cynthia, right? Understanding that Cynthia has kids, understanding that Cynthia is who she is, understanding that she was a good woman and she's just looking for a good man. All you kept saying is I'm very successful in my field and what I do, and the man was like, I don't wanna know what you do. I, I literally just wanna know, you know, what you wanna do with my daughters my kid's mom. I really just want to know how, if you're going to be a good dude for my children's mom, that man was not trying to find out anything else, sir, but you were trying to give it again, turd right for what, for why. So this where it went left. James said, what can you bring to the table? Mm, mm, mm. I got to slow roll this. Woo. First of all, I don't know if I am going to bring anything to the table. Cynthia, if you didn't hear that when you were um, on that this show, then girl, you, that man gave you the red flag in your hand like it was a baton for you to go ahead and finish running that race without him. I'm gonna tell you, baby girl, because he said, I don't know if I am going to bring anything to the table yet because we're still exploring. You feel me? He said, tomorrow I may not be interested. I had to write this down in my notes. He said, maybe I will find something else, but maybe I'll find something else about her. But he said, he basically saying, I don't know if I want her. Now that I met this baby daddy, I'm not concerned with her anymore. James said, I'm not going to let you play with her. Andre gets up because he's trying to exit stage left. So look, let me tell you this. Woo! I don't know how many times Tundra said, I was in Forbes, 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 I was in, that's how I felt. I felt like I was in Forbes was its own song because he kept saying he was in Forbes magazine so many times. It was crazy. James said, I'm not going to let you play with her. And he said, my man, listen to me. I can't have anybody in my life. Basically, Cynthia, he said, you ain't good enough for him. Because he was in Forbes. He was in Forbes. He was in Forbes. He was in Forbes. He said, I can't just have anybody in my life. And that's code for just any old thing. And he was calling you any old thing. Ain't no way. He said, I was featured in Forbes magazine. 
James said he wants the best for Cynthia. So, because he put so her through so much, he wants her to have the best. He wants her to be the best. He wants the best for her. But Andre ain't the best for anybody. If only thing you can say is, I was in Forbes. I was in Forbes. I was in Forbes. Boy, bye. I was just thinking to myself when I see Tardre, Tardre, bless your soul, make you whole. Bless your heart, make you smart. But Anthony, he rose to the occasion. James tried to say some stuff to Anthony. Anthony said, um, you know what? I have to leave too. He like, oh, you, you about to run too. You about to run like this other dude. And Anthony looking at him like, what are you talking about? What you mean? He said, but okay, well, he want to talk to Anthony and ask him, what if my daughter, what if you get your daughter 10 things and you with her, you with Cynthia, and then are you going to get my, he said, I'm going to get your child 10 things as well. And then I'm going to ask your son, if, does he want 10 things as well? Or does he want something different? That's what I'm going to do. But see, Anthony is a man. I don't know what Tardre is, but Anthony definitely is a man. Then he said, Here's the thing. I got to go right now. But look, if you want to talk to me some more, you have something else you want to say to me, get my number from her and you can hit me up later. I was lying. He said, because I'm not going anywhere. Come on, Anthony. You better tell that man. You better show that man that you're a man. You better show all the other men on the show how to be a man. Anthony, I literally loved it in that moment. Even though I think Anthony is a good dude anyway. Like, um, he hasn't given off what the other guys have given. But in that moment, when Anthony said, give him my number, tell him to hit me up later, I was like, that's a man. Because that man wasn't shaking in his, his boots or shaking in his turd like turds, right? That man stood up and rose to the occasion, okay? And I was there for it, here for it, and all the way for it. Now, Jeffrey, 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 we're going to talk about her for a split second. Um, Jeffrey went to her connections, and she told her connections, you know, I really didn't want to bring those because they're not even in my life. They're not in my kid's life either. And they're like, and Blue's like, well, where are the rest of the men? Like, you done dated. Who else have you dated that you can introduce? And let me be Jeffrey again. Well, Blue, I don't think they were worthy enough to come on the show. Jeffrey, can you stop and just act like an adult, an adult lady, and stop with them? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Jeffrey, honestly, we none of us know because all we keep getting is you talking like that girl Woo! i can't see i be having a fast forward when jeffrey's talking because it's a bit much for me but she chatted with blue and mark anthony and let me tell you something mark anthony is just here he's a fly by night type of dude mark anthony got a little ways to go blue I think Blue has a woman outside of this because he's giving, I got a woman and I ain't touching none of y'all. I just like being on this television this real quick. I didn't know I was going to be with somebody. Now I'm with her. Now I can't talk to any of y'all women. That's my take on Blue. So Mercedes, her man, Armand, I ain't feeling the um, cornrows, but some women like that. The braids on a real, real grown man. Um, that was cute when I was in college and I was in my early twenties and late teens, but okay. So her, Armand, Aunt Mark Anthony and Anthony, basically at the end of it, Anthony was winning. Okay. The entire, every X date, he was winning. He was winning because he's a real dude. Mark Anthony was showing player vibes and a lot. The only thing that Mark Anthony kept focusing on in both scenes, whether it was with Jeffrey or if it was in this scene with Mercedes was myself, 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 myself. If myself, 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 he had a song too. You could put them together. You can make a full mix with Turdre and Mark Anthony. Turdre, his song was Forbes, 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 Forbes. Mark Anthony was myself, 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 myself. 
Uh, both of them. Y'all could make a full song. How about somebody do a remix on them because they gave. I'm telling you, Armand, Mercedes' boyfriend said that Mercedes needed to choose Anthony. He was like, that dude knows what he wants and is already ready to get it. Mark Anthony, he knows how to play and he probably plays well. So let's talk quickly about Blake and Anthony when it came to Susu. Susu's ex-boyfriend, Paul, right? Susu's ex-boyfriend, Paul, said that Blake reminds him of himself from 20 years ago when he used to, he was like 20 years ago when I was being smooth and dressing nice and all that. So basically he's saying, Susu, Blake is getting over you, you. I've been saying that too, too. I think everybody has said that. Blake, top flight security is getting over on you, Susu, too, too. And I don't know, you might want to run. Now, Anthony, Anthony, I don't think there's a connection with Sue and Anthony. However, Susu, Anthony is a great choice. I think he's a great pick for any of you ladies, just because I think he is ready. I think he is ready for what life has before him. I think that he knows how to do the work-life balance at this point. I think he has children and he probably wouldn't mind having others. So I think Anthony is ready. Blake is ready to play. Anthony is ready to be with you and date you all the way. So you need to make up your mind. Come on. Let's rock and roll. Jeffrey did a one-on-one -on -one with Andre, I mean, Terdre. Um, and she was all giddy and she was saying stuff, the same kind of stuff she says to all the other guys that she goes out with. But when she was like, um, just, um, you know how I like it. I like the little bites and then give me the small bites if you want right now. She was saying all of that to Andre. And I mean, you throw me off with that, Jeffrey. You throw me off. I'm always like, for what, for why is Jeffrey sounding like that? I have no idea. But move on, move on. Her, they were having this dinner. He cooked them Caribbean food. She said that she was feeling it. She was loving that he made the Caribbean food for her. And and I, mm, 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 mm. when I look at Jeffrey, I see when she, no, 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 no. Let me tell you what Jeffrey said. I had to write this down. When I look at you, I see this strong, powerful man in, in, in Forbes that I want in my life because I have these three kids. Wait, y'all yeah, just playing. That ain't what she said. <laughs> But she did say, I see this strong man. I just threw it in the in Forbes. She said, I see this strong man. And I feel just like, I just feel like I can, I just feel like I can trust you. And I, 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 well, I can't. I, I just, uh, I can see myself with him. I can see myself with Terdre. That's what she was saying. I mean, she said because uh, she could see herself with him. Y'all, this is what I was saying. I just feel like how you can see yourself with him. He got up and left when it got heated. So let's say one of your kid's dads just slides back in that place. That man is going to get up and leave you just like he got up and left the room when Cynthia and her ex James and Anthony were at that dinner. So you better be careful. So I was just like, uh, watch Terdre. Because if you don't, sis, it's going to go bad. But anyway, I got something else to tell you. So Jeffrey, listen, Tom Ford makes the most amazing lipstick. I've always loved their lipstick. Um, their lipstick is phenomenal. His lipstick, sorry, his lipstick is great. So maybe try that. Um, then yours won't like smear like here and here and on that person. And it'll it'll be nice and, you know, because it was looking a mess. But, okay, that was a side note. Back to it. Ladies in the ladies lounge, they're talking it through. Um, Jeffrey said Mark Anthony deserves her. I'm like, okay, girl, look, everybody deserves you. So if you ask you, you said you were just pining over 
Terdray, now you're saying Mark Anthony deserves you too, but you know you gotta choose somebody. You know you gotta choose someone. Um, Blake. At the end of all of this, they talked about the men who were great. They talked about. Oh, I forgot a couple. I forgot. I sat there and for forgot Marcia. I forgot you and Tony. And um, yeah, and blue. I completely forgot y'all. But anyway, um, if you're forgettable, then you're probably leaving soon. That's because <laughs> I forgot all about y'all. I forgot Marcia, y'all. I forgot Tony. I forgot that that ex date. But um, you know, Tony is a slickster, so. You don't have, you won't have blue, so you need to make up your mind. Blake, so here's the thing. At the end, ladies in the ladies' lounge, they talked up everybody, but we can tell that they talked up more getting rid of Blake or blue. Well, we know one thing about reality TV. Y'all know I know one thing about reality TV because on my season, when it was so-called time for me to go home, I wasn't supposed to go anywhere, but they wanted to make, still continue to make great TV. And at that time, I wasn't making them great TV. I was giving in the diary room, but not giving what they needed it to give, the judge they needed it to give inside of the house. So they kept Zach. And producers, I know it. Um, so another thing is that they let Susu go and get rid of to get rid of Blake. So Susu said, Um, I was doing everything I could, and during the ladies' lounge, I was advocating for you, Blake, and I was just like, Blake suck, girl. Why was you advocating for him? But it's okay. Um, but she was in there adv advocating for top flight. And as she advocated and advocated and advocated for top flight, um, Blake, when he arrived, he didn't seem phased. So this is what I want to ask y'all. Do you think Blake knew? I think Blake knew that he wasn't going anywhere. I think Sue already gave him the heads up. I don't know y'all's thoughts, but those are mine. Pretty sure I'm right. <laughs> Pretty sure I'm correct. So I literally think that Blake knew he wasn't going anywhere. You could tell that from his sit down with Sue. Blue, I Blue said when he was talking to Marcia, she was just like, give him, give me some more. Blue said, we're going to get there. And I was like, Blue, when you gonna get there, baby? Blue, are you gonna you gonna get there in 2024? Um, ready to love season eight? Because we we on ready to love season. Hold on, Blue. Hey, Blue. Hey, do you know we're on ready to love season seven, episode eight? So when were you gonna get there, baby? Hmm? When were you gonna get there? Were you ever gonna get that? Well, they didn't give you that chance, did they? They had that, they booted you on. They kept on Blake, who everybody knows that Blake's not good, but Susu. And I can tell you this: Blue said, I'm not for everybody. Blue said this process isn't look, but no, Blue said I'm not for everybody. And I said, Blue, this process isn't for you. <laughs> That's it. Point blank at the period. Susu gave. Blake the heads up like I'm saying that's my opinion that's what I think Blake said something that was interesting he said Sue I'm not really really ready to let you go yo for what for why then they kissed they kissed excuse me weirdly like this Were y'all sipping a straw? I mean, you can tell there's nothing there. I would be, I would feel better if they legit came and told the truth. Like, now nah, I was trying to stay to the end. Um, Blake and I had an agreement because it looks so awkward and weird. Because they, nobody kisses like that. 
And I'm not saying y'all should kiss. Like, eh, eh. I'm just saying it should have been a little bit more passionate, a little more sensual, you know? But it was giving, oh, God, I got to kiss this dude that I don't like him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. That's what it was giving. So for what, for why kiss at all? For what, for why? Bless your soul, make you whole. Bless your heart, make you smart. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I enjoy each and every one of you. Um, I'm Jacosta. Make sure you hit that like. You could subscribe. And notification bell for me. Make some comments. Let me know. Go over to my Instagram at Jacosta underscore Odom or my Twitter at Jacosta or my face. Look, it's Jacosta as well. I hope you enjoyed it. I know I'm behind, but I'll be on time soon. I'm trying to catch up on my life, okay? My actual life. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you have a great Friday. As you can tell, my Fridays are boring usually. Um, I'm going to go work. And hopefully you guys are watching episode nine see you later wait will i see you later yes see you guys later thank you for watching mm -hmm.